All right, you guys, well, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Healing Power of Plant Foods cooking class. I'm April Ashcroft, and I'm really excited to have you all here tonight. I have a passion for teaching about plant foods, about the healing power in plant foods, and I, I'm um, excited to be able to share what I've learned over the last, I don't know, 25 years with you about, about these foods and what they can do for you and how when you drastically increase them into your diet, you can drastically improve your health, increasing longevity, decreasing risk of disease, reversing disease if you have it, and achieving and maintaining your ideal weight. And each one of you can do that. We all have the power and it's in, it's in our fork. It's in the things that we create in the kitchen and put into our bodies every day. And that's one, you know, the food is, is the foundation of our health. There's so, much, so many things out there that are available to us to help us be healthy. In fact, I, I teach for the Bridge Recovery Center and it's a program where people come in from all over and they spend three weeks and they get all kinds of therapies, um, you know, from acupuncture and um, cranial sacral and foot zoning and all these, all these alternative treatments as well as some traditional. And, um, you know, you could be doing all of those things every day of your life, but if your food isn't right, eventually, it's going to catch up to you and you're going to end up with some kind of sickness. So it's such a, yeah, you are, you truly are what you eat. And so um, I'm just super excited to share with you these wonderful, these wonderful things. And just a little bit about me. I come from a standard American family eating the standard American diet. And most of them have gotten the standard American diseases. And I decided 25 years ago, that, or 30 years ago, that I wanted to do something different than I saw my family doing. I knew that it was their lifestyle. I knew it was their lack of exercise, which I thought was the main thing back then. So I got heavily into exercise. And um, when I started to kind of battle my weight, I was looking more at foods and trying to figure out the right diet. But it's so confusing out there, right? I mean, there's, I mean it's not confusing to me anymore, but there's so much out there on the internet that's confusing. It's out there to confuse us. You know, we've got keto, we've got paleo, we've got Atkins, we've got high carb, low carb, which is, you know, pretty much the same as all of that, or fruitarian or vegan or vegetarian or raw food or whatever. You know, it's just hard to, it's hard to know what, you know, who to believe, right? So, but I think the foundation, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious, really. I mean, if you think about it, if you go to the produce section in your grocery store and look at all these wonderful foods that nature has provided for us in its natural form, and you can pretty much know that these foods are good for you. And we just need to incorporate more of them, more of them. I don't really preach, um, I eat a plant-based diet, 100% plant-based diet myself, but I don't really preach vegetarian or vegan because I think it's more important to focus on what we need to be including. If we've got some serious health issues, I encourage people to go you know, more 100% plant-based. But if you're just wanting to eat healthier, just start incorporating lots more plant foods into your diet and, and the health will, will come as time goes on. So um, we're just gonna go ahead, get, go ahead and get started. Tonight I'm gonna do a smothered barbecue mushroom patty and I'm gonna do a salad dressing. I like to do salad dressings often because salad is one of the most important things you can put into your diet. And then we're gonna do a cooked greens. This is the, the class for greens because I've got lots of greens growing in my garden. Although my, the kale, unfortunately, is not out of my garden. My kale isn't doing quite that well. Um, but, and then I'm gonna be doing, let's see, I'm gonna be doing a green smoothie. Again, another way to get greens into your diet. And then we're gonna do dessert, a sugar cookie, which I firmly believe dessert should be a, a part of a healthy diet. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start out getting our patties going. And I'm gonna start out with some beans. And this is about two and a half cups of chickpeas or garbanzo beans. They are both in the same. And they have, they've been cooked. I cooked these from scratch. And the way that you do that, it's very simple. And if you wanna use canned beans, it's totally fine. But I discovered as I was using home cooked beans, I'd go back and use a can of beans and it tastes like the can. So I really prefer to, to do them from scratch. And they're so, so simple. You, just, you guys probably know you look like you're pretty educated on the whole thing, but you just take your dry beans, you get them at any grocery store, put them in a bowl, cover them with water. Like if my beans were this much dry, you'd cover them with water, clear up to the top, because they're gonna swell. Like garbanzo beans probably triple in the size, and so they're gonna swell and take up all that water. Make sure you keep them covered, and I let them soak for eight to 24 hours. The more they sit, the more bubbly they get, and when you drain off that water, which you need to do, after they're done soaking, you drain off that water, rinse them really well, 
you're going to drain off that bubbly stuff that's going to decrease the the gassy effect that it has on your on your gut yes more they're even more digestible yeah and I usually don't let them sprout I usually just soak them for the 24 hours and then cook them but that's another step that you could do so um, okay so just a few things about beans you know beans are a, are a really a magical food like the songs used to say beans beans the magical food the more you eat the healthy I say the healthier you are um, and, the, and the less problem you have down here um, the more you eat them, the more you're feeding your good bacteria and the more happy they are. And as time goes on, your body gets used to them and you, you are able to digest them a little bit better. Um, what's that? Yes. In fact, um, studies show that one cup of beans a week, or two cups of beans a week, sorry, decrease colon cancer by 50%. So if we were eating them every day, a cup of beans every day, we'd probably pretty much eliminate that risk. So, okay, so I've got, uh, um, like I say, about two and a half cups of garbanzo beans in my bowl here. And we're going to add to that a chopped onion. Let's see. I've got, I've, I've actually got, uh, we're going to do a, some barbecued mushrooms and onions tonight. And I've got um, on your recipe sheet, I've got listed all of the mushrooms, or the onions and mushrooms needed for that. So I'm going to kind of do both of those at the same time. So we're going to... Leftover what? Yeah. If you have like leftover beans, how long will they stay? You know, I, what I do is I, I, I scoop them out in plastic uh, two cup containers, two and a half to three cup containers, and I put them in the freezer. I, I put them in little square containers and so they fit really nice. I just stack them in my freezer. They fit really nice and that works really good. Inside a plastic bag, a bag or something? Yeah. Or a bag, yeah. You could do or a bag. So I'm going to go a half of an onion in here in my pan, and then I'm going to, um, oh, actually, I don't want those in there. I want these actually over here in my, I want those in my, in my patties, those chopped ones. We're going to put sliced ones actually in my pan. So we'll do that. Now, or, onions have powerful anti-cancer pro pro properties. They have organosulfur compounds. And those compounds are not activated until you start, start chopping that onion. So, and, and we feel it, don't we? You know, when those onion compounds, those sulfur compounts become activated, we, our, t our eyes start to water. Those are good. I mean, the more powerful those are, the more um, cancer-fighting properties that they have. So these onions that I'm going to put in my pan, I'm just going to slice. In population studies, um, people that eat, oh, it, actually it was a large European study with 10 countries. People that ate the most mushrooms had the least cancers of all types. They target every type of cancer. And then we'll take this other one. So we're going to go two and a half, or one and a half onions. We're going to slice and then just put a half an onion in with our patties. This is, the, this is the smothered barbecue mushroom patty. Uh -huh. And in that recipe, if you read through a little bit, um, you'll see that the part, of the part of the onions you saute, and part of them you're chopping and putting them in with the patties. So, ooh, and that's a strong onion. I'm feeling that one. Are you putting anything in your pan? Yeah, I'm putting the sliced onions in my pan. Right, but are you putting water or how, nope. how do you cook them? Nope. Thank you for asking. I was going to bring that up anyway. I don't have anything in my pan. This is actually a non-stick pan. But you can do this without a non-stick pan. I don't have any water, oil, or anything in my pan. I'm just doing a dry saute. And that's going to, first of all, I want to caramelize the onions. And I'm going to turn that up, up actually a little bit. Yeah, well, you know what, actually I start out at a high temperature and I just kind of keep stirring them. And this is, like I say, this is a nonstick pan, which I usually don't have at home, but it sure is nice. <laughs> Maybe I should get one, although I'm not, I don't love the nonstick, but... Um, if you don't have nonstick, it still works the same. What's that? If you don't have nonstick, it'll still work? Yeah, you can still saute. You just kind of got to keep it on it because it'll have a tendency to stick a little bit. But if you just keep stirring it, and what's going to happen is your... your 
onions are going to start to caramelize. They're going to start to get a little bit brown. And I, I'm not using any oil. Oil is 120 calories, a tablespoon of pure 100% fat. It's the highest calorie, lowest nutrient food that we consume, and it increases, not decreases, risk of heart disease. So if you're eating a standard American diet and eating lots of animal foods and butter and um, mayonnaise and, um, you know, all those high fat, you know, creams and things like that, and you add, and you substitute butter and, I don't know what else, for olive oil, butter and, and Crisco maybe, for olive oil, when you substitute, you are, that is benefiting you. But if you take someone eating a whole food plant-based diet that's not including any oil, you, and you add oil to it, you're gonna have negative effects from it. The Mediterranean diet is not healthy because they pour olive oil, olive oil on their food. It's healthy because they eat a plant-based diet. And because of those, all those plant foods, that's helping them decrease the risk of heart disease. And it's, it's kind of decreasing the effect of the oils. And what happens with those oils when you eat them is they coat the inner lining of your artery. It's called the, the inner lining of your artery has endothelial cells and they produce nitric oxide. And that nitric oxide, oh man, that's getting really hot. <laughs> that nitric oxide keeps your, keeps your arteries like Teflon, like this pan how these onions are just riding around there and not sticking at all. The inside of your arteries are like Teflon. And I, I know I want my arteries like that. And that nitric oxide coming out of those endothelial cells makes, makes it that way. When you put olive oil in your body, in your blood vessels, which is what you're doing when you eat olive oil, it coats that inner lining and it shuts down that nitric oxide production and makes your arteries so that they stiffen quicker and slows blood flow 40% within four hours, a high, a high olive oil meal. And it's very fattening. You know, back in the late 80s, when we heard that olive oil was so healthy for us, and we started pouring it all on, on all of our food and using it, we've gotten a lot skinnier as a nation, and heart disease has totally gone away, right? <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's, we're worse. You know, we're heavier as a nation, and heart disease is even is not any better. So there's something wrong with the olive oil story. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, I encourage you to go on my website, healthforlifecooking.com, and the number four is, the four is a number four. And if you scroll down just a little bit, I've got a, a few videos about that. I've got four videos talking about Dr. Furman, Dr. Um, Caldwell Esselstein, um, Pam Popper. They're all talking about oil. Pam Popper talks about coconut oil and how it is not a healthy food. So go on my website and look at those videos and I think they'll pretty much convince you. They, you know, tell the science a little bit better than I do. But, okay, so um, I've got my onions there. I'm just gonna let them keep, keep sauteing there and maybe just turn this down a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna chop some garlic. Garlic is another one of those foods that has those those um, organosulfur compounds, all your allium vegetables, your onion, your leek, scallion, garlics, um, you know, all, all your onion family vegetables have those organosulfur compounds that, that target cancer cells and help them die. It's called apoptosis. There's lots of apoptosis going on when you're eating, when you're eating garlic. Okay, so we're just going to add that to our, let's see, what are we going to add that to? We're going to add that to here, I think. <laughs> I just want to keep that from sticking there. Okay, so we're going to go, let's see, we've got our, we're going to add our mushrooms, okay? We're going to add a cup of chopped mushrooms, and we're going to add some sliced mushrooms, right, to the... Um, I'm using the cremini, baby bella mushrooms. Mushrooms have powerful compounds as well. Um, they have aromatase inhibitors, which keeps estrogen levels low. We women want to keep our estrogen levels low because when estrogen levels rise, we increase our risk for breast cancer. By the way, my little helper tonight in the kitchen is Catherine. Thanks for being here, Catherine. <laughs> And still, we're still doing good there in our pan. I, when, I, when it starts to stick a little bit, I um, will add a little bit of water. But the mushrooms are very, very moist. There's a lot of water in them, so I may not have to add any. 
liquid at all. Okay, and then we're going to add, let's see, a cup of rolled oats. Grains, whole grains are really good for us. I know people, there's books out there, the grain brain and wheat belly telling you that grains aren't good. Grains are really good for you. They decrease risk of type 2, type two diabetes. They decrease risk of um, cardiovascular disease. They, they lower your blood pressure. Um, they give you energy. We get energy from carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are our friend. Okay, and then we're going to add, let's see, we're going to add a half a cup of barbecue sauce. And this is blender barbecue sauce, which is on the back of your recipe sheet. And, but you can use any kind of bar barbecue sauce. And I just, I wanted to blend that up and have it already. So, and that's just mainly just blending everything. And if you notice, I've used dates in there as well as maple syrup and molasses. Molasses is your second, let's see, I think it's your second best sweetener because it's so high in minerals. And, um, and then comes, let's see, sugar, date sugar, molasses, then dark brown sugar is your next best sugar. And then your maple syrup, honey, and all those are, are nutritionally not great. I mean, honey's okay. It depends on, you know, if it's local or not. But So I try to use dates when I can. Dates are a whole food. I try to use as much of that. In fact, uh, about 90% of my desserts, I use dates to sweeten. Um, not always. It depends. In fact, the cookie I'm doing tonight, I don't have them soaked. Yeah. So. Yeah, for the, for the sauces, I like to, if I'm blending it, I like to soak them a little bit in some of the water. Okay, so then I'm going to add to this here. I'm going to add some liquid smoke. That's actually a little bit down further on your recipe sheet, but I'm going to go ahead and add it in while I'm thinking about it. Liquid smoke. And I'm going to do some seasonings. I'm going to do some, yeah, I don't need that anymore. Um, I'm going to do some, a teaspoon of each chili powder, cumin, and onion powder, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and one quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Just add that right in there like that. And we're going to go with two tablespoons of mustard. Uh, let's see. This is a brand new thing, so... washed your uh, barbecue sauce thing. Can I taste what it tastes like so I'll know whether it's worth making? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> For me. Yeah. Um, there is some. Let's see. I have some left. Maybe in that black. Where did I put my barbecue sauce? I know I have a bunch left, and, but if you want to just let her take a taste out of that. Does everybody else, does somebody else want to do it? I want to take a sample of let me see if I, oh, here's my, here's the sauce right here, if you want to let that people taste great. it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. You like that? Yes. Did you say you're using two tablespoons of mustard? I used, uh-huh, two, uh, let's see. Oh, yes, actually, in here, in here, we're just doing one tablespoon of mustard. I'm thinking I'm doing my barbecue sauce, because the barbecue sauce takes two tablespoons of mustard. Okay. So yeah, just one tablespoon of mustard in the patty mix. And I've got my black pepper in there, garlic powder, all that, rolled oats, garbanzo beans. OK, I think we've got everything in there that we need. So I'm just going to stir this around. Um, oh, yes, please. Thank you. Oh, see those mushrooms get nice and juicy. And we don't have to, I didn't have to add any water to this at all. So we're just going to let those cook. I want those mushrooms to cook down and the onions and get them nice and soft and juicy and we'll just, we'll pull. What's that? Oh, there we go. Who's operating that camera anyway? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt to this. The barbecue sauce really adds some great flavor. So I don't, you don't need to add a whole lot of salt to these patties, but I'm just gonna add a little bit. So some, some things about beans that I didn't that I didn't mention. Let's see. They're high in fiber. Uh, we need fiber to feed our gut. That's why one of the reasons why beans are so good for you is because they're loaded with fiber. And when it, some of that fiber is resistant starch, and that starch, that resistant starch, um, passes through the natural normal digestive phase, 
and goes into your large intestine and changes to butyrate, which is a fatty acid that feeds your gut bacteria. Just one, it's your best beans or your best probiotic, probiotic food. And that's, what, that's where we want to get our probiotics and our prebiotics is from food. If you've had a round of antibiotics that have killed your gut, you need to go on some antibiotics most likely. But if you're just an average, you know, fairly healthy person that's trying to eat healthier, your best place to get your probiotics is from your, is from your beans and plant foods. What's that? Oh, it's a, it's a pastry, pastry cutter. Much better use of your pastry cutter than pastries, <laughs> than flour and lard. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just using my pastry cut cutter to mix all of this together. And you can use a food processor like this KitchenAid. You could use that. When I used that, I found I ground it, I ground it up too much. I had a hard time keeping it to where I wanted it because I want them still a little, have a little texture. I, want, I don't want them totally soft. So, um, what's that? Good arm exercises. Yes, good arm exercises too. <laughs> Uh, so uh, beans are very beneficial for blood sugar. They keep your blood sugar level. They help prevent food cravings. They decrease your desire for sweets. They help you stay full. They um, help move cholesterol and other fats out of the body. They increase fat burning and reduce fat storage after a meal. Uh, they promote good bacteria. They soften stool and help, bowel, help with bowel regularity. I tell people you got to take the garbage out every day to keep your system running good. <laughs> um, let's see, they've been shown to lower your heart rate by three points for just, um, by just one cup a day. Lower blood pressure. Half a cup of beans um, cut precancerous polyps by 65%, just a half a cup of beans a day. Okay, so that's looking, we want this really sticky. And that's looking really sticky. Okay, and how we can test that is, of course, just grabbing a bunch and, and if you needed to add a little bit more oats, if it was too soft, you could, but I think those are going to be fine. I don't have any more oats anyway, so. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to grab my cookie sheet and let's see, I'm going to give these to you, Catherine. And, okay, so we're just going to take a cookie scoop, and I usually do, when I'm doing regular size patties, I'll do about a half of a cup. I'll get a half a cup scoop and scoop them out, and that way they're just all uniform. But I'm doing just a little bit smaller, so we have enough to feed all of you, although I think we would have no problem feeding all of you. And just kind of smash it together so it holds well, and then make it into a patty. Lay them on your cookie sheet. Now I've got parchment paper laying here on my cookie sheet. This is a great substitute for using oil and it, it's so much easier. Cleanup is so easy with parchment paper. Now we're doing these patties actually um, I, I meant to actually bring some sprouted wheat bread tonight, but I usually do these, and I didn't, but I usually do these without, without bread anyway. And you can have a little piece of bread underneath, but because we're doing, a, we're doing some, a rice dish, rice and kale dish, and then we'll also have our salad. I usually, I, what I'd call it is a patty stack, and I'll put like a patty and then some cooked greens and then some, like I'll stack it with some good stuff. And you don't even really miss the bun. But of course you can do it traditionally like you would a, a, um, a regular patty, bun, burger, whatever. I like to have, if I have a patty or something like that, I like to have any lettuce leaves with tomatoes and mm -hmm. all the stuff. It actually tastes a lot better. Yeah. Well, I find you, t you taste the patty. Like when I have a big thick bun with it, it's like I'm just tasting bread. It's so thick and it just kind of takes away from the flavor. Yeah. Well, years ago when our children were little, we had the Roman leaf lettuce sandwiches. 
where you use the Roman leaf. The Romaine lettuce. And then they put all their vegetables and mm -hmm. tomatoes and avocados and all that stuff. All the good on stuff. The leaf lettuce. Yeah. Yep, they make that makes great. Uh, Although I, if I'm going to have a burger, I like to have I like to have a little bit of like an Ezekiel. I'll use the Ezekiel bread. I don't use the buns because the buns are really thick, and I just don't care. For, I don't care for that much bread, um, so I'll just use a slice of Ezekiel bread. But I've gotten to where I just really like to do these patty stacks much better. So, and this makes quite a bit. This usually makes about if you're doing a half a cup of each into a regular patty size. It usually makes, I think, six to eight, six to eight patties. We're just going to do all, finish all of this up with the last one. Okay, so we're going to put these in the oven at 350. Uh, degrees for about 20, let's see, what does it say on your recipe sheet here, um, for a half hour. And then we'll flip them and bake them just a little bit more. Catherine, do you want to put stick those in the oven for me so I don't get stuff all over the pan? Thank you. Yes, it is on. Put that over there. Um, yeah, the top one. Okay, we'll go back to our onions and mushrooms, and those are looking really good. Nice and juicy. Again, I want to get them really soft. And we're going to pour some barbecue sauce over those when they get a little bit more done. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see, I think I'm going to move my this pan over here and get my kale going. I love kale. Leafy greens are the healthiest foods on the planet, and we need to be eating them every day and lots of them. Um, my favorite nutrition expert, Dr. Joel Furman, he recommends two pounds of vegetables for maximum protection and healing, two pounds of vegetables a day. Pound of raw, pound to cook, make sure a pound of that is greens. So, a pen, you know, half a pound of, of raw, half a pound of cooked greens or whatever. I find that really hard to get that much into your diet, but um, they're just so, they, re, you know, they, they will pretty much reverse, I think, pretty much any disease. But um, just some, they have powerful anti-inflammatory properties, decreasing risk of pretty much all disease because all disease has a pro-inflammatory effect. Um, kale in particular is a cruciferous vegetable and uh, cruciferous vegetables have the most powerful effect against cancer in population studies when um, they increased vegetable intake 50%, 20% cancer rates dropped 20%. When they increased um, cruciferous vegetables, 20% cancer rates dropped 40%. So you're getting double the protection. Swiss chard is not a cruciferous vegetable, but it's good. It's a green leafy vegetable and it's very good. Although um, it's got calcium in it, but the calcium is bound to the fibers of the, of the plant, uh, to the oxalates. So um, you want to eat more of your kale, collards, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, those cruciferous vegetables, more than you want to eat your spinach and your um, collard greens because you're getting more, you know, you're, you're absorbing the calcium better. Yeah. Yeah, they, they can be. Um, I think, you know, as long as you're not eating a whole, you know, a ton of them. I love, you know, beet greens and, and collard greens. Okay, I'm, I, it says this recipe is just for a small onion, so I'm not going to use this entire onion. But we're going to kind of do the same thing with this onion. Just saute it for a, for a bit. And I'm going to get another spoon back here. I know there's another wood spoon. You guys are kale eaters. You probably just put it in your smoothie maybe. That seems to be that no. That seems to be the, you know, the popular thing to do with kale, but I found if I'm going to do a smoothie and I I've kind of gotten away from doing smoothies, but 
If I, um, if I do, I use more of the spinach along the spinach lines, which is what I'm going to do tonight. But um, I love to cook kale, and I love to eat it raw in a salad. Like I'll take this, this chopped up kale, and I'll get some tahini, which is a great oily you know, substance, and I'll massage the kale with it. And then I'll just keep it in a bowl and add it to my salad. And that just makes a really nice addition to a salad. I don't eat it just plain like that. I mean, you could. But, um, but this, this tonight, I'm just going to, I have most of this chopped up. And I was just going to um, just show you. I just stack, you guys probably know, but I just stack the leaves. Just wash them and stack them nice like that. And then just slice them. Oops, get that onion off there. And I use the, um, the stock, not all of it. I'll just stop, chop down a little ways. And when I'm getting to the stock, when it's a little bit thicker, like it is on this leaf right here, I'll just, just pull it, just rip it off like that. Same with this other one. Um, oh, it's not. Um, well, you know what? It's thick. We put that in about 6.30, so they'll be ready to come out about 7. So we'll just keep an eye on that. And then I just chop them the other way. And the more you chop these greens, the more you're activating the anti-cancer compound. So kale is a cruciferous vegetable. Did you? Oh, yeah, you never did. It was a decoration on the buffets, right? Yeah, now you can't keep, they can't keep it stocked in the store because everybody's buying it. But in, in one part of the plant is, um, a substance called myrosinase and another part of the plant is called glucosinolates and when you chop that up you're breaking up the cell wall and those compounds are mixing together and they're creating isothiocyanates which are your anti-cancer compounds so you want to chop these up really good before you cook them to kind of activate those compounds and this this dish you don't have to do the I often just I'm lazy and if I'm doing like a patty with it's got onion in it. I won't put onion and garlic in here. I'll just put the kale in there, a little bit of water, and just steam it, and then add the avocado, which in the rice, and which is which we're gonna do. But um, I, I thought I'd just do some onion tonight in it, and just keep an eye on those. And you can see it's not, and again, it's non-stick, but it's pretty good about not sticking, even in a non, a, a not a not a, anyway, a regular pan. <laughs> And once they start to get a little brown, I'll add a little bit of water. If you want to get a measuring cup out of that one of those drawers down there and just grab me some water out of the refrigerator, actually to your left. Bottom, down towards the bottom, there's some measuring, measuring spoon or measuring cups. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and these mushrooms and onions are really nice and tender. So I think I'm just gonna add some barbecue sauce to this. And you can add as much as you want or as little as you want. just to make a nice um, barbecued mushrooms and onions combination. And we're just going to serve this on top of the patties. Oh, I probably add about a half to three quarters of a cup. And you can go less than that if you want, just a little bit less. Okay. Um, you want to, oh, actually I have a lid right here. That's the wrong lid. Do you want to find me a little smaller lid to go to that? It, just under here. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water, and I just add just, you know, about a quarter cup. Although since I'm going to cook kale in here, I'll be adding more. But that just loosens. You add that water in there, and it loosens up any brown that has um, built up on the bottom of your pan. It loosens that up, and that just adds some flavor to your dish. Okay, and then I'm going to add this kale. Add all of this. And then I'm going to add the rest of this water, probably, yes. Ah, close enough. <laughs> um, let's see, let's try this one. Oh, no, actually, let's try this one. That one's better. All right, awesome. Now my pans at home, I know just what to do. 
<laughs> but when I'm using other pans, and I don't have a, I don't have a gas stove either. So can I get one more of those? So I'll have to kind of keep an eye on that so I don't burn it. But on my on my burner on my stove, I was just telling her tonight, I've I've got a an electric stove, and what I can do is bring it to a boil, turn it off, put the lid on, and just let it cook. And I don't I can just totally turn the heat off, and I don't need it on anymore. But you can't do that with a gas stove. So I'm going to put about um, about a half a cup to three quarters cup of water in here. Actually, I'm going to put all that in there. And then I'm going to put the lid back. I'm going to put the lid on. The lid for this. Did you take that lid away from me? <laughs> just kidding. Okay, we're just going to keep that on there and let that cook. And then we're going to move over here to the blender and the food processor. We're going to do, let's see, we're going to do a salad dressing tonight. So I encourage people to get a big leafy green salad in every day. Actually, before the salad dressing, we're going to do the smoothie because that's that's one thing I, I encourage people, you know, to eat more greens. A lot of people don't like greens if they're coming from, you know, the standard American diet. They want to do healthier. I say, get a leafy or get a, a green smoothie in if you can. Um, you know, it's a good way to get a large amount of greens. And when you blend those greens and you chop those greens so finely, you're absorbing like 90% of the nutrients in those greens. So I'm, I'm just going to do a green smoothie for you tonight. Um, I'm going to get just another one of those of water. So I start off my green smoothies with just plain water. I don't do juice and I don't do nut milks. And that's just my preference. I prefer to use just whole foods. So I'm going to start off with some water. And I just cover up the blades basically, so about a half a cup. This is just a smoothie that I kind of do every day for my husband. Um, and then I add, if I want to add a little bit of sweetener, I add some dates. Dates are a whole food again. All the parts of the plant are still there. And I'm just going to add a couple. We're, this is a cherry, a cherry smoothie, so it's, it's quite sweet. And then I always add, uh -huh, without the seeds, without the, yeah, without the seeds in them. And then I always add to my smoothies, I always add um, some kind of a seed, either flax seeds, chia seeds, or hemp seeds. They're all great sources of protein, great um, omega-3 fatty acids. And flax seeds in particular and chia seeds contain lignans. And lig lignans convert to phytoestrogens in the body. And we want to get phytoestrogens in because phytoestrogens bind to our estrogen receptors that we have all over our body and block our the other type of estrogen, our the estrogen that our body, that our fat cells create. That's the kind of estrogen that increases risk of breast cancer. When we block those receptors and we're with these plant estrogens, we're greatly decreasing our risk of breast cancer. So we want to use these, these flax seeds. And then I'm going to add, let's see, we've got, um, we're going to add some green, we're going to add some spinach. And you can go as much or as little as you want if you're not real, you know, real used to, real used to greens. You might not want to go quite as many, but it kind of depends, you know. We'll go a couple little handfuls there. And then we're going to go with some fruit. You know, just grab my fruit out of the freezer. There's some cherries and some, cher and some strawberries. I'm going to also add to this, I'm going to add a slice of lemon. And this is just to add a little bit of citrusy goodness. And I'm going to add some of, the, some of the skin to that. Not very much, just a little bit. And then we're going to add some cherries. I'm going to just up the fruit in this a little bit. Now, when you're blending fruit, you're making the sugars in that fruit more absorbable. So your body's absorbing them quicker, faster than if you were to eat a cherry or eat a strawberry. And so I'm just going to peek on this stuff right here. Are those, like, frozen? Yes, they're frozen. So they don't need seeds or no, they don't. So what you want to do when you're eating, when you're drinking your smoothie is to drink it slow. You don't want to put two cups of fruit down the hatch in 10 minutes, you know, especially the cherries that are super high in sugar. And, and the way I do smoothies is I, I do one, I usually just do two fruits, except if I'm doing a couple dates, I'll have the dates. But I'll do like a sweet fruit and then a not so, a less, less sugar fruit. So either, um, like today we're doing cherries, that's a high sugar fruit, and then I'll do some berries. Or an orange. Oranges are high in sugar, and then I'll do some berries. So 
And berries, you want to get berries in on a regular basis. They, berries are brain food. They also help your skin, prevent DNA damage, prevent UVB damage from the sun. Um, they increase circulation, hydration, and elasticity in your skin. And like I said, they're brain foods. In fact, I've heard blueberries called brain berries because they've been shown to reverse age-related mental decline. They help to lower blood pressure. Um, let's see what else berries. They're just all around good for you. High in antioxidants. And antioxidants are anti-aging compounds. So, huckleberries. huckleberries, I have not. Oh. Are those super good? Oh. Oh, I'll bet. So good. Okay, so we're just going to give this a blend. Do you guys do grain smoothies? Yeah. This is kind of a common thing of today. Um, hey, we'll go ahead and blend. I put, ex I put a little bit of extra um, fruit in here just so we had plenty. Um, so your recipe calls for a cup and a half of, or a cup of cherries and a cup of strawberries, or one and a half cups of strawberries. So I put a little bit extra, but. Um, Um, they come with this. They so come with. They food. come with the blender. What's that? Can I just use a wooden spoon or something if I don't have that type of Yeah, but you want to be really careful because this. It'll just blow it, it will. Yeah, it'll just eat it up. Eat it. Yeah. Oh. Um. So. Huh? What kind of blender is that? I just had eight vitamins. Oh. It's no, we're good. We got 15 more minutes. Yeah. What's that? Oh, I just asked one. I don't have that type of blender, so I oh. just have the old-fashioned blender. Yeah, you know, you know, and you can do it in a in a regular blender. They don't. You'll want to soak your dates. So if you don't have a strong power, like a Vitamix or a Blendtec, soak your dates. So get a little container and put some dates in it if you're going to use dates, and cover them with water, and that way they'll soften up. And that's just to kind of increase the sugar. You want to be careful though if you're diabetic. You want to be careful with too much fruit. It's better if you make your smoothies higher in greens, to where you can actually taste the green. I mean, you want to be able to drink it and enjoy it somewhat, but I try to, you know, is the more greens you can get in there, the better, and the less, the less sugar you're going to get in your can system. You add some kind of nuts to that too. Uh huh. Add protein to it. Yeah, so you could. Uh huh. Way, if you're diabetic, it would Slow down the absorption of the sugars. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so um, if you want to just kind of divvy that yeah, out amongst seven. two, four, I, I six. I from watching you that I wasn't. Yeah. Um, or I do one for you. Blending you mine also. long enough because I still ended up with pieces of spinach in it. Oh, really? And so my husband would like not even come near it. Oh, I'm wouldn't like, he? It tastes really good. And he's like, it looks really horrible. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, you want to blend it down really good and get it get it smooth. Um, and when you're eating fro when you're using frozen fruit, um, you don't have to worry about it getting cold. I probably should have thinned that down a little bit more. Is that like yeah. clump clumpy? It's like, it's like mud. <laughs> I'm just going to turn that heat down a little bit. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, it's a, like I said, it's a great way to get greens in and you're blending it down so your body's absorbing them. But if you get too much fruit and not enough greens, you know, you're going to throw your, throw your blood sugar off like that. So, um, all right. So we'll get that. Um, oh, you, we, we need some spoons too. I'm going to grab some spoons over here. I forgot to grab these. Um, mm -hmm. There's some spoons for you. Oh. So with kale, uh, well, uh, with cooking in general, um, I was talking about a website earlier tonight with some of the ladies that were here early, um, nutritionfacts.org. It's Dr. Michael Greger. He's a researcher, medical doctor that's devoted his life to the research and getting the research about nutrition out to the public. He does lots of little short video clips every other day about the latest in nutrition research. And one of his videos is on cooking methods. Um, what's the safest cooking method? Um, steaming, sauteing, boiling, microwaving, stir frying, uh, pressure cooking, I think are, are the main ones, but, um, and, the, and the nutrient loss with each of those. And they were similar across the board. The nutrient loss was similar. In fact, it was about 14%. And he said, if you want to make up for that, just eat more. Okay. So you just, if you're losing 14%, just eat another clove of broccoli or another head of broccoli. Um, you know, broccoli florette or what florette there you th thank you. Um, but um, the, one of the the boiling w was that had the most nutrient loss, but all the nutrients went into the water. So if you're doing a soup, you're going to be able to preserve that or if you're drinking your liquid after you cook your but you know, so when I do cook, I cook with li very little water, like this kale that I was cooking, I just put enough water in to where it would cook it and that I wouldn't have like a soupiness in the bottom where I wanted to drain it off. So I'm going to keep everything right here. And kale is one of those vegetables actually that, in, that in, improves your immune system the more you cook it. That, this is another video he did. They just boiled the heck out of the kale. And the more they boiled it, the more, uh, uh, the more stimulating it was for, for your immune system. Yeah, and I think it's probably because you're absorbing it better because you're softening the fibers of the greens and your body, it just has a, a better effect. And actually there's some other um, vegetables that do the same, carrots and celery are like that. The more you cook them, beets, you don't lose, there's no nutrient loss with carrots, celery, or beets, you're increasing the absorption because you're softening the fibers and making those nutrients more bioavailable. Now like lettuces and I think spinach may have been one. Um, bell peppers are really delicate, you want to eat those raw if you can. I mean they're nice to add to a dish to add some extra flavor, but if you're wanting the nutrients from them you lose, I mean they're super high in vitamin C and you lose a lot of that when you, um, when you cook it. So, what, what nutritionfacts.org, Dr. Michael Greger, his, his, he watched his grandmother get wheelchaired into the Predican Center back in the 50s I think or something and he, they, her, her doctor sent her home to die. And she walked out and lived another 30 years and saw her son graduate from medical school. And he just, and, and because she changed her diet, they taught, they taught, you know, a super healthy whole food plant-based diet there and, and reversed her heart disease and everything. Yeah, go ahead and pass that out. Thank you. I'm Dr. Michael Greger, nutritionfacts.org. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse that out while you're doing that. So if there's one thing that you can do to improve your diet. Um, oh, How Not to Die, yeah, that's this cookbook. Yeah, it is a great book. It's about like yay thick and I'm only about a quarter through it, but. Mm -hmm. and then he goes into the yeah, and how to incorporate them, and he's got recipes and stuff, I know. So, 
Okay, so um, this is a great way to get greens in. Um, a salad is your next best thing. If you can get a big leafy green salad into your diet, that's one of the best things that you can do for your health. And so I'm gonna show you a salad dressing because for me, I, I prefer to have a good salad dressing rather than, some people can just put a little balsamic vinegar or a little vinegar on their salad or even a little bit of lemon juice. I gotta have a good dressing. And I really love this tahini dressing. I don't make it nearly enough. In fact, I was thinking today when I was putting it together, I need to make this more. So the foundation of a lot of my, dr my dressing recipes is basically the same ingredients that you're gonna find at the grocery store, but it's in all whole food form, except your vinegar, of course. So this dressing is a rice vinegar based. And what I've got here is a half a cup of rice vinegar and a half a cup of water. Actually, not quite the amount of water, but I leave like half the water out so I can use it later and I'll show you that. But so I've got my dates soaking and the dates are your sugar. So when you go to the grocery store and you find your salad dressing, your vinegary salad dressings, you're gonna look on the label like you always do when you buy something in a container, you gotta look at the label. Um, and you're gonna read down the ingredient list, oil, sugar, and vinegar, right? Those are gonna be your main ingredients. So I've got everything right here in whole food form. I've got my, uh, I've got my sunflower seeds, uh-huh. It's the creamy tahini dressing. So I've got two tablespoons of sunflower seeds. Those are gonna provide the oil. I've got dates, those are gonna provide the sugar and then the vinegar. So that's kind of the base of a lot of my salad dressings. I do a, a sweet mustard, I do a pecan de Jean. Um, I do kind of a tomato-y dressing where I put some toma tomato paste in with it. So I've got all these soaking and I soak them just to soften things up. You don't need to soak them if you've got a good strong blender. If you don't have a good strong blender, you're gonna wanna soak them. It's, it um, um, makes them blend much easier. So I'm just gonna dump all this right in the jar. Yeah, you want to you want to let them soak for you know about four hours to get them to get them good and soft, and even overnight is actually even better. So, okay, and then we're gonna go with two tablespoons, I believe, of raw tahini. You guys familiar with raw tahini? Tahini is sesame seed butter, so it's like peanut butter, but it's sesame seeds. I'm just gonna check my kale, and it's um it's not raw. You can find raw, but it's hard to find raw. I haven't seen raw for a long time. I'm gonna just taste my kale real quick here. That kale is just not getting tender, very tender. So do you like that brand? Um, I do like this brand. It's uh, unsalted, organic. And you can use sesame seeds. If you wanted to put two tablespoons of sesame seeds in here, that would even be better, actually, because this is made from white sesame seeds without the hull, and the, the raw brown sesame seeds are with the hull. Um, this is a Woodstock brand, sesame tahini, um, at the health, at Natural Grocer. Um, this is just a little bit easier. It's, it's easier to use. You know, you just scoop it out. All those seeds are pretty easy to use, too, really. Um, but a lot of people, you know, I never knew who I'm teaching. I don't know if I'm going to be teaching hardcore people, you know, that would, would prefer to use the seeds or if I'm teaching people that are, want a little bit more simple and this might be to them a little simpler. And plus, if you don't have a good strong blender, this works a little bit better because the small seeds are, um, they're a little bit harder to, oh, thank you. You like the, oh. Oh, oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you, though. Okay, so we got our tahini in there, and then we're going to go with some lemon juice. One, um, juice from one lemon. Could you do it without nuts? Without the nuts? Oh, what about seeds? You can do seeds. So this is sunflower seeds and, and tahini. I, I'm not using the cashews. Yeah, there's, I, I get, I run on to people, a lot of people that are allergic to nuts. So I try to use seeds when I can. Yeah, yeah, the almond cookies are definitely a problem for nut eaters. Although you could use sunflower seeds in place of the, um, in place of the almonds. Sunflower seeds lend a little bit different, kind of a different flavor. But if you like, I mean, I think it'd be fine. In fact, I need to try them sometime because... They would be really good. Okay, so we got our lemon juice, our tahini, our sunflower seeds, water. Okay, we got everything in there. Super simple, just a few ingredients. And we're just gonna go ahead and blend.
Now the reason I leave out a little bit of the water is because a lot of times when I'm blending, stuff will jump around in your blender jar and it gets all over the side. And then I like to take my little bit of water that I still need to add and just kind of clean down the sides, although it did really well in this, in this batch. Not too much jumping around. The great thing about using Whole Foods with your, with your, um, your dressing or anything is it naturally thickens because of the fibers in the seeds, the fibers in the dates. So you don't have to add any cornstarch, you don't have to cook it, just all blend it up right here in the blender. Notice I'm not using any salt in here because the dates, um, you know, you're, you're getting a lot of sweet. And, and dates are actually, I mean, I don't know if they're high in sodium, but they have kind of a salty flavor to me. Seems like, like the barbecue sauce, I don't need to add salt to that barbecue sauce because it's already got um, enough flavor without, I mean, the, I think the, the dates are naturally, I think they just add, lend a little bit of sodium flavor or something. I don't know what it is, but okay. Um, this dressing, because of the vinegar and the dates, keeps at least a week, if not more. I've had them last more. The, the, the trick is, not the trick, um, but what you need to do is use it in a week because you're having a big leafy green salad every day, right? <laughs> okay, so you can just go ahead and add that. I put it in a glass jar and I save my tahini jars and my salsa jars and I store them. I like to store in glass if I can. I try to stay away from plastic, especially with vinegar and um, tomato-y based things. Stirred, or do you did you do that ahead of time? Uh, you know what? I store it in my refrigerator upside down. When you turn it, the oils go to the bottom, and it, you know what I'm saying? Because I usually, with the kind I've got, I usually end up with a lot of oil on the top. You know what? Flip it over, and that'll go to the bottom. And so, I mean, you'll still have some oiliness in the in the tahini, but uh -huh. most of the oil will go to the bottom. The same with peanut butter. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, when it separates. Just Oh, I'll pull That's them out because they are ready. We're going to go ahead and pull our patties out and flip them over because we are just about ready to, um, yeah, we'll move that out of the way. Let's see, excuse me for a second. And where is a spatula? Oh my goodness. No spatula? Well, we'll maybe use a one of those. So we're just going to flip our patties. They look good. They smell good. Like April, where do you get your dates? <laughs> it looks just like they do look like cookies, don't they? Hmm. Um, chickpea cookies. Chickpea, you know, they use chickpea flour for some cookies. I wonder if you could just use the whole bean. Add a few dates and anyway. Um, dates, I get them at um, Costco, actually. You can get them in a tub. The Diglett Noor is the brand, is or not the brand, but the the type of date. Yeah, they move them around. Right now they're down by the fruit. Sometimes they're up by the dried fruit in the by the candy and or not candy, but. You know they've been really good about keeping the Diglets in. I mean they used to the Diglets used to go away and they just had the Majules, but. Recently, they've been really good about keeping those, keeping those stocked for us. So, Deglet, D-E-G-L-E-T-N-O-O-R. D yeah, you can, she can write it down for you. Oops, oh, wrong spoon. Okay, so that kale is looking pretty good. It just was having a hard time getting tender for some reason. Okay, so when, I, when this kale is done, then I'm going to add some rice to this. Um, let's see. And I like to add, so you can eat this kale just the way it is, but I've been doing a lot of rice and 
adding rice and kale and you can add beans to it. I have a recipe for black bean kale and black bean tacos. So what I do is I take my kale and I add black beans to it and then and you can add rice too but I'm going to add about a cup. I'm going to add about two cups of rice I guess maybe to this or a cup and a half and you just add just however much you want. Um, yeah, um, this is actually short grain brown rice. I like the short grain. It's got a nice chewy texture to it and it's really quite good. It's brown rice. Yeah, I always use I always use brown rice. I don't think I've ever cooked white rice, if you can believe that. I just grew up, my grandma made brown rice all the time and I loved it. I loved it with butter on it though. I don't do that anymore, but I do avocado butter, which is what we're going to do tonight. So, okay, I am going to go ahead and add that avocado. So this is the butter. This is nature's butter is an avocado. I like to mix avocado into any cooked vegetable. It's, it adds a, or put it on your toast but it's great adding it to a, any kind of cooked vegetable, steamed. You want to grab me a fork, please? Just out of that drawer, yeah. Um, yeah, I just mash it up in the, oh, there's no fork? Oh, dear. Uh, uh, let's see, there's, oh, there's no fork, really? Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Okay, no fork. We might have to use, we might have to use a plastic fork, which is over here. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> I didn't even know that silverware drawer existed. So, so many, they have to go in thank you. <laughs> okay, so I just take the avocado and just mash it up right here in the shell. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. You, I could have just cut it up and mixed it in because that would work as well. But this just gets distributed much better. I'm going to turn that. We want to turn that heat off. We don't want to cook the avocado. Uh huh. The rice was already cooked. Yes, and I just um, what I did with the rice is I just boiled two cups of water, um, throw in one cup of rice, or you know depending on your cookware how, you know it kind of depends how your how your cookware cooks, but you just kind of get to know it. I like to cook it to where there's no water when when the rice is done. There's no water to drain off. I'd rather have it a little bit dry and have to add some water than have it um, too moist and have to drain it off because then the rice is a little bit watery. Okay. About 25 to 30. And again, it depends on your pans. I've told that to people and they're like, really? Mine takes 40 minutes to cook. But I think my pans are just, they just cook quicker or something. It's waterless cookware. So I'm just going to add this avocado right in here to this rice and stir it up. You can just do kale. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's what I used to do. But since I've been adding more grain to my diet, I just am loving the, the kale with the rice mixed together. That's a good food for winter anyway. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Where is? I should have some salt, a little salt shaker somewhere. And, you know, depending on the kale, sometimes you don't need to add any salt to this. I'm going to add just a little bit. And I'm using... So I can't get that lid off, so we're just gonna. I'm just gonna use just a little bit, and I'm using real salt. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that could use a little more avocado or not. It you use like one half to a full one, depending on the size bunch of, you know, your bunch of kale, however big your. I think I'll leave it as is for now. And those have a few more, it's like five more minutes for those patties coming out. So we'll, and what I do, like I say, I, I, for tonight, normally I would do like a, like a patty stack. And what I would do is do the, do the patty, put the barbecue onions and mushrooms on top of the patty, then put this on top of that, and then maybe your salad off to the side or put that on top of it as well. But I'm going to have it separate for you guys so you can taste the patty separately from the, you know, from the greens and then from the salad as well. So and then it, you can mix it together if you want. So I will put that back there. And just hold off on dishing that up till we get those patties so they're so it's nice and 
nice and hot. Okay, so now I'm going to do our cookie. When those come out, we'll put these cookies in the oven. So you'll need a food processor for, for these if you're going to do, if you want to do these cookies. Um, you might be able to do them in a blender jar, um, but probably not. <laughs> I was just thinking some of my cookies you can, but probably these not. Make a small, like individual smoothie just for myself. Uh huh. That... Yep, you totally could. Okay. Yep. Instead of making a whole bunch. Yeah, of for sure. Okay, so I'm going to start out again. This cookie recipe, we're using all the components of a regular cookie recipe. We're using a flour, we're using a fat, and we're using a sugar. The flour is going to be oats. These are just rolled oats, regular rolled oats. They are gluten free, in case anybody cares. Um, and then I'm going to use a cup of almonds. These are raw raw, unsalted, unroasted almonds, and then a cup of dates, so a cup of each, oats, almonds, and dates. This is about, I haven't soaked them, nope, they're just, they're just, um, um, I would do sunflower seeds. Mm -hmm. In fact, I might go half sunflower seeds and half hemp seeds, because hemp seeds are, um, they're, they're not as, well, they have a strong flavor too, though. Anyway, sometimes if I've done seeds in place of nuts before, I'll half it. I'll use maybe sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and hemp seeds. Of course, they're both, seeds have, a, seeds have a strong flavor. So all three of those might, I don't know, you'd have to kind of experiment. What's the difference in hemp and chia? Now, I use chia seeds. Is there any difference in those? Well, there is, nutritionally there is, but um, oh, I couldn't is. tell you really. I mean, flavor-wise, hemp has got a, is a very oily a oily seed, and I think chia is probably a little bit drier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, and I'm not sure. Hemp, hemp does? Yeah, I would think hemp would. Okay, so I'm just going to, right now, I'm just going to chop this all up right here. Of baking soda. You're using a food processor? Uh huh, I am using a food processor. This is a KitchenAid. And what, we're doing, what we want to do is we want to um, grind this up until it starts to become sticky. Okay. And that's just the dates and the nuts. You know, as they chop, those oils are released and the moisture, you know, increases and it just starts to stick together. Um, you can... Oh, yeah. So we're going to go with a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And the apple cider vinegar mixed with the baking soda is going to help these to kind of rise a little bit. I'm using a teaspoon, so we'll go three of those. Or is it four teaspoons in a tablespoon? I can't remember. Three's good enough. <laughs> and then we're going to go with a teaspoon of almond extract. Any other flavors? You could do vanilla. Um, I like to do the almond extract because it gives it the sugar cookie flavor, you know, like a sugar cookie. Mm -hmm. If I can get the lid off. This isn't a new bottle. I wonder if... Slide. What's that? That slides because it gets kind of sticky around the top of it. Oh my goodness. Do you want to run some hot water over that or try it? Maybe you, maybe you can get it <laughs> better. I've never had that problem with my almond extract before. Okay, we'll just keep that running for a minute. So if you want to serve up the patty and just put a little bit of the mushrooms, a little okay. bit of this over the top of each one. Okay. And um, yeah, okay. there you go. Just a little dollop of that on top. Okay. okay, so thank you. Okay, we'll go with um, some almond extract.
And as you, as you can see, it's starting to kind of clump together. And you can, what's that? I said the oils are coming out. Yes, the oils are coming out. The dates are, you know, getting ground down really fine. So that's going to help to make it sticky too. We'll go just a little bit longer on that. Excuse me? Can you use just a regular blender if you don't have a... A blender probably wouldn't work. Um, what about the pastry? Cutter? It's too thick. Of a yeah, it's too it's thick. Really it's much too thick. You could do, you know, I've got some other cookie recipes where you make more of a... You know when you do cookies and you get your butter sugar combination where you stir it all together when you've got a more liquidy you could do your dry ingredients in a blender and then do your dates and your water and those ingredients and then mix it together outside of a you know but but not really it wouldn't work with this this type of cookie yeah that could work that would work too yeah yeah Okay, we'll go just a little bit more. I forgot. Okay, that's going to be good enough. I'm going to take these cookies off of here and use this plate because I forgot to, that I was going to need another. Okay, I'm going to turn that parchment paper over and use it again because that's the only piece I brought. So um, we'll get it. We're just going to get a spoon and just scoop out. And you can use a co cookie scoop on this if you want. Just going to scoop out a little round ball about yay big. And you can make these as big as you want. Would, just, in a Vitamix or? would this work in a Vitamix? Uh -huh. um, no, we, we were just saying, um, you know, the, the Vitamix is too small in the base. It would get too, I mean, you could try it. it. I mean, it might if you were just, if you did a little bit at a time, but I think it'd be too thick. Yeah, it'd be hard to dig out. Yeah, that'd be great. So you could do, you know, a, a few variations with this recipe right here. You could do chocolate chip cookies instead of the sugar cookies and do vanilla instead of the almond extract. Add a few chocolate chips. You could even do, I do an oatmeal raisin where it's more, oh, you keep the oats, you know, more whole. Like just grind part of them with dates and, and you could do raisins, uh-huh. Uh, you could even add cocoa powder to this mix right here. In fact, at Christmas time, I do truffles and I grind up dates and nuts in the food processor and I add cocoa powder or some other dried fruit like cranberries. I have a, a, um, a, tr a truffle, I guess I call it, um, nut ball, whatever. I call it taste like Christmas nut candies and they taste like Christmas. They, you know, they got cinnamon, nutmeg and they're, they have apple, dried apple in them and just really, really good and if I have those around the holidays I don't cheat on the bad stuff I can just enjoy those and not be so tempted with all the chocolates and things so yeah these would be really good with some cocoa powder mixed into it make it make it more of a chocolate cookie sesame seeds, work in there for the almonds. Mm -hmm. sesame seeds would work mm-hmm Sesame seeds have a pretty strong bitter flavor, but I think with the dates, it would probably be really nice. In fact, there's a, there's a candy that's made that you can buy at the health food store that's made with sesame seeds. Does anybody, you guys know what it's called? And it seems like I've had a friend that used to do a candy that had sesame seeds and like, or dates or something in it, and she used honey or molasses or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's perfect. Good job. Um, well, I, I buy the the dairy free, soy free, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Enjoy Life is a brand that is really good. That you know is it's still got you know your your chocolate your you know cocoa powder raw powdered cocoa powder or cacao is your best way to eat chocolate, you know, and add it to things like this. Chocolate chips are kind of more. 
you know, they're very decadent. I mean, they're still, they're using cocoa butter, which is a high fat, saturated fat. So you want to be careful when you're using chocolate chips and just not overdo it. In fact, one thing about my desserts, as you can see, they're still, they're still high in fat, they're still high sugar. It's not something you want to eat every day. So I tell people, if you're making my desserts, make them so that you have, make sure you have lots of friends to share them with. Because if you're like me and you've got this batch of cookies in your house, they call at you all hours of the day. <laughs> and they say, I'm so healthy, you can eat all of, all of them. <laughs> and I have a hard time getting rid of that in my head, you know. So. Oh, did, um, I, does anybody need a napkin? I usually don't hand on napkins, but I'm not a napkin user. <laughs> but if anybody. But like I said, I think I really think that um, a good healthy diet deserves some good good recipe or some good desserts, a good dessert. And it's okay to have them, you know, on special occasions or for a, you know, I, I used to only make these like when my kids come over on Sunday, I'd make a batch of cookies. But for my husband and I during the week, I just, they're just too, too hard to have around for both of us. Because, you know, like I say, you want to eat, you know, five or six of them and the batch only makes three, six, nine. You know, you'd have them gone in two days. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's me. Totally. I hear you. <laughs> My portion is control is when the when the container's gone or whatever. So, how is everything? Good. 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 Great. I didn't know what to expect with the avocado. In there, I like that adds a nice, yeah, it's nice smooth. oily, smooth texture. Kind of pulls things together, and and you could add more avocado. It's hard for me to tell without actually tasting it. So, and I probably could, should have tasted a little bit of it to see, but that does that avocado just really adds some nice. And like I say, um, you know, I love to add beans to this combination. The greens, beans, and the and the in the um, the whole grains. Just a great, that's a great protein, calcium combination right there. We don't need, we don't need cow's milk or, or hamburgers. We got, we got all the protein we need in, in there. In fact, I wanted to point out the fact that I've got a, I believe there's a handout over there, it's a green one, about um, plant-based proteins. Um, and I, you know, I, I just, if you get nothing else out of, out of this class, we have such an obsession with protein in our country and we don't need to worry about it at all. Throw out your protein powders. We don't need any protein powders. We get all the protein we need in plant foods. That's where the cow gets it. It's where all the herbivore animals get all their protein, all their calcium needs is from the greens. If we're eating lots of greens, we're getting plenty. In fact, I mean, in fact, that handout has even fruit on there. You know, fruit is like 7% protein on average. And so everything, you know, what we want is amino acids. And amino, all, all amino acids come from the ground. And so that's where, that's the best, cleanest source, animal, or uh, plant, Plant proteins come with bonuses, antioxidants, phytochemicals, fiber, lots of so many nutrients, and animal proteins come with baggage. Cholesterol, saturated fat, no fiber, um, animal protein, which can be a problem with cancer, in growing cancer, and so it's just a much cleaner source. So um, I just, you know, wherever you guys are at with your nutrition, you know, your, your health is like the best gift that you can give to yourself and your loved ones. I mean, where, you know, what can we do when we don't have our health? You know, when we're sick, the most important thing to us. In fact, when we are sick with a cold or a flu or something like that, what do we want most out of really anything is to get better, right? So the best thing that, thing that we can do for ourselves is to feed ourselves well the best gift we can give to ourselves and our family and our friends that are around us so I just encourage you to kick it up a notch you know wherever you're at with your nutrition just make it a little bit better and if you're struggling with some kind of disease you know um, cardiovascular disease or diabetes or something like that then you know jump right in and give plant-based nutrition a try for 30 days and see what it can do for you because it's, it's powerful medicine and it's been pretty much proven yes you like that yeah, yeah. good 
On this, uh, the patty, could you substitute another bean if you wanted to? You could. You could do, yeah, you could do any kind of bean. That's kind of the base. In fact, I meant to mention that. That base, the, the, the beans and the oats and the onion and garlic, that's kind of a base for really any type of patty. You could do, I have a chickpea patty where I put um, tomato paste and some Worcestershire sauce and it's kind of like, it's kind of got a um, kind of a barbecue-y flavor, a little bit of liquid smoke. And I also have a, you could do a lentil patty. I have a lentil patty. Uh -huh. In fact, I did that the last, my last class. And then I've got a black bean burger, which I've got green chilies and, ch and chili powder and cumin and all your Mexican seasonings. And then I've got a uh, Italian patty, actually, that you could make into balls for like little meatballs, but I do it into a patty. And it's made with kidney beans and Italian seasonings and some tomato paste. And so again, that base can be a base for, you know, you can use any kind of bean. Grains, I usually use oats in all my patties. I just like, and you can use, you can use some rice if you wanted. That changes the texture just a little bit. Some people really like rice in their patties. What other? Rolled oats, no steel cut. Um, oh. I, no, I don't do steel cut. You'd have to cook the steel cut oats probably if you wanted to use them. And they might work cooked. I'm just not sure. Because you, you use cooked rice. When I use rice, I use cooked rice. So I'm sure you could use steel cut oats. Uh, I just use regular rolled oats. Just like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, you want to get the old fashioned rolled, like the thick rolled oats, not the, not the quick, not the quick instant oats. Because they would, I'm afraid it would get too gummy, sticky. So I'm going to be back uh, for community education on June 20th and July 31st. And summertime's a really busy time. And those classes are often pretty small and often canceled. So if you want to get in on those, be sure and sign up soon. And ho hopefully we can hold them. Huh? Yes, they're doing a, they're doing a catalog this for the summer semester. So... Be sure and sign up if you want to come again. I'd love to see you all again. Uh, same place. Yep. Um, you said tonight you could get a, your new cookbook. I have your old one. Oh. But you say you have a new one. I, I, well, it's new, but it's, um, I, I have a, she's asking me about my cookbooks. I have a couple of cookbooks. I don't bring them with me tonight normally, but I do. Um, Yes. Did, did somebody call me earlier? You called me. Okay. And I brought, I brought yours, but I forgot about yours. Darn it. I have both of them. I use them all the time. <laughs> huh? I have both of them, and I use them all the time. Yeah, well, I have her old one, but I was going to get the oh, other one. Shoot, tonight. I totally forgot. I, I can hook up with you another time. Yeah, I went to her website and just ordered them. Huh? I just went to her website and ordered them. Yeah, you can do it that way too, but then you pay shipping, darn it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, you're in town, aren't you, Dorme? I live up, down. Oh, okay, but you're in town often, aren't you? No, oh, aren't you? Not very much? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I should have wrote that down. Anyway, that's, um, that one is, it's like three or four years old. I've had it for a few years, well, so, I, but it's my newer, newer one. Oh, it's the newer one. Yeah. I might have some in my car, actually, so I can run out when we're done. We're pretty much done, though. But thank you guys for being here tonight. Well, thank you. It's great to have you. Love to have you again. Hope to see you again. <laughs> Tell your friends. Bring your friends next time. Thank you.